What's going on guys? This is Miasin back at it with another DB video. I know I'm slowly but surely turning it into Austin. But yeah, uh, the reason by the way why I'm making these videos now and I didn't use to before is because I really like the upcoming format Phantom Nightmare. I feel like there's a lot to share and a lot to showcase. You know, it's not just the fire decks dominating. There are some other decks that are really good as well that have a lot of potential and... I want to see it's the kind of format where anti-meta decks and rogue decks have a lot of potential to shine. And I will be making a lot of videos on this, uh, uh, you know, topic in the upcoming weeks. But anyways, before we go any further, I would really, really appreciate you if you could show me some love and smash the like and subscribe button. I can't keep making these videos without your support. So yeah, I can't have some ninja watchers, you know, watching this video and not smashing the like button, bro. Otherwise, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's not gonna work. But anyways, uh, who's gonna win the dice roll? It's gonna be the Vanquish Soul player. Oh no, uh, it's really scary when you've got Shifter because you don't even have to win the dice roll. You can go second, and this card completely carries. But yeah, this hand is so insane. Imagine if he went first, he would have been able to play through like Droll and Imperm because he's got the Kirin to dodge Imperm on the Ash and Call by the Grave for any other hat shop. And even the Shifter, if he went second, he can Call by the Grave the Shifter. Except if you, I mean, yeah, you, you can't really go like Veiler to bait and then chain shifter. But if you had like an Imperm, oh, actually that also would have wouldn't have worked. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, Vanquish Soul is gonna be going normal summon the Raisin in order to search the Burger. I'm also gonna steal the same pronunciation as Austin. Uh, summon the Burger and then reveal the shifter in order to draw one card. Must be nice uh, to draw the worst card that you can potentially draw at this point. Uh, go into Rock and then recycle back the Heavy Burger so that there's no cards in the graveyard and you can legally use that shifter. And you don't even have to do anything at this point, but you're still going to be going, okay, small world, banish that uh, Veiler that literally does nothing. And then search for a second burger and bastard there. This is a very interesting hand because realistically, the only thing that you can really do is SP Little Knight. And that's it, that's all. Can't even use original Sinful Spell Snake Eye or Diabell Star. And Kieran destroying the Ponyx is pretty awful. So yeah, very good hand, but under the circumstances of Shifter being active, it's quite abysmal. And he's going to proceed to end of main phase. So whether it's end phase or battle phase, you don't have to say it in Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, if you're trying to proceed at the end of a phase, you can just say like end of main, main phase. And then if your opponent agrees to the end of main phase, you say, okay, battle phase or end phase. So if you're doing that, you can bait your opponent really well, uh, but he's not going to be doing that. He's just going to proceed to end of end of turn completely. And now he's just got like an open board and he's, op he's ready to get killed, which I, I don't really like too much. What I would have done would have been, uh, I normally summon the Ash, get the Populous, and then make an SP banish that. And then if my opponent wants to break my board, he's going to have to play uh, through the SP, which means he has to commit to the board, which means he might potentially play into the Nibiru. And also, Cow by the Grave is also a potentially good card at uh, just keeping you alive. Or maybe not, but whatever. Now he's just not going to be doing that whatsoever. I can't really say I agree, but, you know, again, it is what it is. Yeah, anyways, normal summon the Raisin, search the Jalong, and then since you're revealing to make it undestructible by card effect, you can special summon the Jalong, bounce back in order to summon the Caesar, and this is going to be 7,900 damage, but the Heavy Burger can reveal an Earth and a Fire to burn for 15, so it doesn't matter, he's going to win anyways. Alright, so game two, Fire King is going to be going first. Just gotta pray that there is no shifter. So yeah, Fire King Island, Drill and Logbird, Arvata, Diabellstar, and Ash, very good hand. Against Double Prosperity, must not be nice. And then Nibiru and Fenrir, I literally hate the fact that there is both a Nibiru and a Fenrir on the same deck list because if you're Nibiruing your opponent going second, you now have a monster on the board and you can't summon that Fenrir. It must not be nice at all. It's really annoying. But anyway, summon the Diabellstar, discard the Droll, get your original Sinful Spell Snake Eye. I love how the two hand shops don't even interact with like the very beginning of the combo. But yeah, this, this is going to be searching for Eponix and then normal summon the Ponyx. This is the kind of unfortunate uh, situation where even if you have Island, you still have to search Sanctuary because otherwise there's no card to send with your Ash in order to evolve into like an Oak or a Flamberge. So it feels really bad to search like a like a redundant card, but you know, it is understandable at the end of the day. Anyways, Farking Island is going to trigger in order to search the Garunix and then trigger the Garunix because you would destroy the a fire monster. And that is going to be most likely destroying the Kirin from deck, yeah? In order to revive back the Ponyx, which uh, is uh, going to be used as a Link Material for Masquerina. And then Link off into Princess, and then Flambert summon two monsters from the graveyard. And at this point, I mean, Nibiru can be used. You don't even have to waste your time with DD Crow. Uh, there is no good fire monster really worth, I mean, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, Nibiru is kind of just big now. So yeah, that's going to hit the board. The Arvata is useless. 
uh, second island obviously is useless. There's only ashes in interruption. So yeah, that's uh, quite terrible. Uh, this Nibiru token would have had 27. For, uh, okay. I would have summoned the Nibiru token in attack, actually. Not in defense. Because now that you have Fenrir, you want to be able to crash the Nibiru so that in Minfis 2 you can summon Fenrir and actually have an interruption for next turn. So I also disagree with that, but oh my god, drawing the shifter for turn is so good because he didn't have to use the DD Crow. Man, that is big. So one thing that you can do is that he can go shifter and then chain the DD Crow in order to banish the princess or the Garunix. It's uh, up to him, but he has to go for a very big push now. Uh, so yeah, all right. So activate prosperity. There is no more drool, so he's probably going to be ashing that. Yes, sir. Yeah, and yeah, this is where it gets really, really bad. All you can really do now is an SP, and yeah, that's kind of it. Now, I guess now that it has really low defense, you can still jump over, and then, yeah, normal summon the DD Crow, but come on. That's just really bad. All of that just for an SP, and then he has, like, one turn of grace where he can't do much. Uh, normal summoning the Arvata is actually 100% correct because it turns on double interruption, so property and princess, as well as the Garunix to revive itself back and then destroy the Kirin and stuff, so that's uh, kind of big. But to be fair, it does also play into SP because now if you banish that, then you're still on top deck mode. And you've got like no fire monster to pop with the island because cross out top deck is pretty bad. And he also didn't set the cross out, which is interesting. But yeah, normal summon the raisin is like, I mean, this is like the best top deck imaginable and prosperity is now live. So that is actually going to be resolving in order to get a bunch of cards. Uh, I guess the farking player does not play prosperity himself. Otherwise, the cross out would have been a great target here. But yeah, I still would have set the cross out, like, there's really no reason not to do it. Unless I'm missing something super obvious. Oh my god, revealing dro triple drool in a row. What are the odds? And he's obviously gonna be taking the small world. I'm not, I don't really think you want the drools in simplified game state. But yeah, uh, what is that small world even gonna be searching? I guess it can banish the Fenrir because it does nothing now. Uh, search, like, a hand shop, like, maybe an Ash for next turn. Uh, you can search another DD Curl. Yeah, I mean... If you With two DD Crows, you can banish the Princess and the Garunix so that the grind game is really bad, but there's also uh, Original Sinful Spell Snake Eye in the Graveyard. That's also a search card. Oh my god, this is bad. Yeah, like, this is really bad, because he can't jump over this Arva... I can't believe that Normal Summon Arvata Go is like an unbreakable board now. Yeah, this is actually catastrophic. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, if he l goes for a Link, he plays into Princess. So he has to DD Crow now, okay, because otherwise, I mean, this Arvada dies and, like, completely backfires. And then he's going to be linking off into a Hita, which does revive, uh, resolve, summon the Garunix. Obviously, he can't use the effect because he's not playing Farking. Oh my, wow, yak side. And then link off into an SP, banish the Arvata. Okay, so he found the solution. It's really that simple, but that's all he can do. That's really sad. That's really, really sad. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, not really showcasing the power of Vanquish Soul at uh, their full potential, but to be fair, he did have to wait a couple of turns to see that rise in because Prosperity is uh, only good when it resolves. When it doesn't resolve, it doesn't do much. Anyways, the original Sinful Spell Snake Eye is going to be giving him a follow-up play, and that is going to be enough, unfortunately. So we are going into a game three. This time, Fire King going second with an Imperm. Actually, that's not too bad. And an interesting hand of Populous, which is useless here. Farking Island, Ash, and Arvata. Against Prosperity, Heavy Burger, Mad Love, Fenrir, and Super Poly. Prosperity for 6 has a very high likelihood of digging into a Ryzen. Honestly, I would have used the Prosperity before summoning the Fenrir in order to give less information to my opponent. To make him, like, more confused. Because summoning the Fenrir, it doesn't even play under uh, around Jewel anyways. You can just, like, hold it in your hand. But anyways... Uh, is he going to be getting the raisin? Yes, sir. Okay, well, he's in business. Man, this is... It just feels so good when you have, like, everything. You know, Fenrir, Super Bali, your one-card starter. Okay, the Mad Love can't draw, but, like, time has been called realistically, and then you're burning for 15, divided by 2 because of Prosperity. Surge Fenrir off of Fenrir, normal summon the raisin or to surge the Caesar of Alias. And then he's going to be going into the Link. Um, there is no reason to imp him, by the way. Uh, Imperming the Raisin is also always incorrect. You always hold the Imperm for the Link Monster on your own draw phase or standby phase. And he's just gonna pass turn now after setting a Super Poly and not drawing a card off of Burger because of Prosperity. One of the drawbacks of the Vanquish Soul strategy, a lot of inherent conflicting, which is very annoying. By the way, the Farking player just drew the most hilarious card ever, 
which is Garunix. Usually this would be a brick, but in this unique situation, it's actually a great top deck. Uh, the reason for that is because when you have like only, like, let's say Farking Island and Garunix, there's like literally nothing to destroy off of Garunix if you choose to use the effect of special summon in hand. But now you can go like, I'll go Farking Island, destroy the Arvata, and then search, I mean, yeah. Or, or you can, yeah, I mean, you can destroy the Populous and then search the Kirin, and then trigger the Garunix, and also, like, trigger Kirin, destroy the Arvata, and just do a lot of things. So, yeah, this board can, I mean, th this is just, like, an insane hand. Uh, well, at least now. And anyways, the Imperm is going to be negating the Fenrir, which I also think is very interesting. Uh, I no, Yeah, no, you know what? So in this situation, I think, I don't think I would have Impermed the Fenrir. I would have Impermed the Link 1 on draw phase or standby. Even though this could have been a continue, so it would have backfired. And then, yeah, Island, Special Summon Garunix, destroy Kirin from the deck, and then Special Summon the Arvata from hand, and then destroy the whichever card is not being taken care of. Fenrir does not interact really well here, and by the time you summon Arvata, you now have a monster negate for the Fenrir, and the Super Poly would have, would have been completely useless. So yeah, I definitely would have impermed the, the Rock, but he's playing around the uh, Raisin anyways, by summoning it, uh, by summoning the Ash on uh, over, well, I mean, in front of the rock. So yeah, now if you want to destroy the Ash, you're also going to be losing your uh, your uh, your Link one. But yeah, even either way, you can also summon it in front of uh, the Burger or the Fenrir. But yeah, surge the Populous and then trigger the Populous in order to special summon from the hand in the wrong zone. But it doesn't matter. Surge the OG and then he's going to be going for a Link Creep most likely, and then plays the Populous in the Spell and Chap zone. And then transform into a Flamberge. This is where it becomes extremely overpowered. Yeah, and if he doesn't go for SP's effect, he can also go for the OTK. Now he's going to be using the effect in order to recycle back from the graveyard to the hand. And I want to say this is usually where you can tell that the Vanquish Soul player is going to be losing. Because this is negated. There's only Super Bully and Caesar left as interruptions. And it's just not enough. Uh, yeah, he already drew the Heavy Burger into Staker Soul, which is useless. And yeah, he's going to be sending the Link Rebo in order to summon the Ponyx, and then that's going to be triggering in order to get to the Sanctuary. Best way to play around uh, nothing, actually. I mean, MST, whoa. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, get to the Island, and he's going to be triggering the uh, Caesar Valius in order to bounce back the Burger, uh, trigger uh, Farking Island, and chain the Caesar in order to destroy it. Worst decision ever. Mm. Uh, I would have preemptively summoned the Caesar uh, on the search of the resolution of the search of Ponyx, uh, so that you can destroy the Sanctuary, because this does not target any either way. I mean, it's not like a, on a separate chain link, it happens right away. But now, destroying the island when there is a Sanctuary protecting it is very bad, because now he can just protect it by destroying a Fire Monster. He's going to be destroying the uh, Kirin, and the island will resolve in order to... Uh, sorry, destroy the Arvata. The island will resolve to destroy the, uh, uh, the Ponyx in order to surge the Kirin, so that now the Arvata can resolve in order to... Revive back a fire monster from the grave, but he's not going to be doing that. Yeah, okay, no, he will. Mm -hmm. Chainlink 1, Garunix, Chainlink 2, Arvata. So this Ponyx is negated, and then he's summoning the Garunix, which can easily just destroy a Kirin from deck, and then revive back the Arvata and destroy that Super Polymerization. So he has to chain Super Poly, like, literally right now. There is no other timing after that. You got to use it now, exactly. So yeah, fuse away the Garunix as well as the Ponyx, and... This is an OTK, yeah. Because when you have Flambridge and any other monster, and your opponent is out of interruptions, you can OTK through like a full board, because you can go for uh, either Sunlight Wolf or any other Link 2, revive back two monsters, Promethean Princess, revive back the Flambridge, and then make a Raging Phoenix into Zelantis, banish everything, everything com comes back face down, you go Princess, destroy your Fire Monster as well as an opponent's monster. Uh, they, all, they all come back face down, by the way, in case you're uh, wondering. And then you uh, can go Battle Phase, go uh, World Sea Dragon, Zelantis, destroy two monsters, and all of your monsters have like 10k attack. So this is why the Van Crystal player scooped it up, because exactly as he's saying, he needed more hand shops. And the Far King player will still play it out, because he does want to get a little practice in. Although this is completely irrelevant, he doesn't have to do any of that, because the game is 100% over, the OTK is quite obvious. And again, uh, one of these monsters die will die off of the Princess and the, the other two off of the Zelantis. So yeah, this is going to be enough. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Peace.